Hey everyone, welcome to the 10X Your Success Story Online Summit where 30 experts will share their skills, secrets, and shortcuts to help you achieve your most ambitious dreams. My name is Jeric and I am your host. Our guest has over a decade of experience in marketing and sales. She also led not less than 500 people in doing sales and marketing. And she is the co-founder of Social Media Academy with over 700 students and counting. She is also sharing her marketing skills and leads and develops social media marketing campaigns. And she is the co-founder of the digital PR firm Prime Press, where they get brands on major publications like Forbes and Entrepreneur. She is also a columnist and an active contributor to high-level blogs like Influensive, Thrive Global, and Good Men Project. Dami. Let us welcome Melissa Profeta. Hi, Mel. <laughs> Sorry. How are you? It's a very pregnant. How are you? Doing good. I'm doing great. Thank you for spending the time with us and, you know, jumping on the interview. Huh? Yeah. Right. I, you know, I have a lot of feelings right now. <laughs> I'm nervous, happy, and excited. And I don't know. <laughs> See my baby speaking. Yeah, I'm excited too. <laughs> so, again, let's, let's proceed with the interview. You said that um, what helped you achieve all of these success is your, you know, skill of communication and adaptability, right? How did you get started, you know, improving your communication skills? And um, how did this help you achieve your success? How did it start? Actually, it all began when I was in elementary. Um, I loved Harry Potter books and I owe it to my grade five English teacher. Um, she ba basically encouraged us to really focus on enhancing our communication skills. So not just the English language, but being able to communicate clearly to, to people because she says that it's going to be a very important aspect in your life when you grow up yeah. um, in terms of um, sales or marketing or whatever kind of industry you're going to be in. It's going to be important. So um, at that point, when I heard her, the good thing was that all of my classmates were all competitive. She gave us an incentive to use the English language, but by um, if, for example, um, we're going to use the Filipino language, We'll get fined five pesos. So from then on, we're always talking in English. Ever since grade five, and then you know, that's that's where it all began. But anyways, communication per se, it's not just being able to like talk to people, right? So when I say communication, it it comprises of di different kinds of um, branches. So when when it comes to communication, that's it, also in under. It's sales communication, persuasion, being able to present an idea, things like that. So it's so it, I just put it in, in one category, which is communication. And then adaptability. Well, the funny thing is, sorry, I'm kind of catching up my breath. I don't know, it's different. <laughs> but, um, to give you guys a, a backstory about myself, I am a multi-potentialite. Uh, when I say I'm multi-potential, I know that I'm the type of person who can do pretty much a lot of things. Um, I love learning new things on the get-go, and I have a, a, a sh this you know shiny <laughs> object syndrome. Sad to say, but although that's my weakness, um, I've turned that into my strength, which is you know being able to adapt fast. For example, I'm given something new, uh, just give me a night, and I'm pretty sure that I could understand it and then implement it the next day. So that's, that's that. And um, being able to adapt fast helped me give birth to different kinds of concepts, strategies, ideas, and so on. Now, that's something that I've developed ever since I was in grade school. So you asked me how I did it. How I applied it, but or yeah. how did okay. this help you become successful? Oh yeah, this is going to be pretty long. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> okay because those two core skills have pretty much helped me ever since um, I've started my entrepreneurial journey. So in terms of work and whatever industry I got myself involved in, 
um, I, I've been using both of the, both, both of those. Um, I was a network marketer before, and then I eventually, I just had a, a change of mindset when I got pregnant. I, I told myself that I had to have a secure kind of job. So yeah. I, I basically um, applied in a BPO setting. Mm -hmm. So even though I was in the BPO industry, I made sure that I'm going to make a lot of money. <laughs> so I applied in a sales account. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was handling telesales, selling radios over the phone and also um, t telecommunicating services. So AT&T. I know you guys are familiar with the U-verse, yeah. So basically after that, um, no, sorry, kind of lost. <laughs> during, my BP, BPO, <laughs> during my BPO days, I made sure that I wasn't just stuck at being a tele, telemarketer. Yep. Okay, I, I made sure that I was still um, applying what I've learned in the past, which is in network marketing. And I also made sure that I had clear goals because I'm the type of person who gets bored easily. So if, for example, I'm, I've been doing something for six months and it's not progressing, I would really feel bored and bad and I want to move on to the next phase. So what I did with, back then was that, okay, I made sure that okay, after six months, I got to get promoted, which actually happened. So I became a, a trainer, a communications trainer and product trainer. Um, and then after a few months, I became a lead. But then I really got bored because I felt like, okay, I'm already... Um, achieving and earning like whatever more than what is expected so what's what's next what's the next thing for me so the good thing was that at that point when i was in that kind of mindset my uh my life partner my hubby the the, the father of my kids told uh, told me that he, we're going to open our first startup mm -hmm. so that first startup we were selling soaps but any soaps um, slimming juices, slimming coffee was the last product, but then it, it ended really bad. Um, we, we, you know, we got bond cap and it didn't work out, but that's okay. I learned a lot of things back then. And that's actually the reason why I got in the freelancing industry. It's because we really got zeroed out. So uh, we had nothing basically. Mm -hmm. So we were already in debt. Um, but then I was left with, you know, my abilities, my core skills, and there's the internet. So I made use of the internet. I was pretty much already not knowledgeable about the opportunities that, that are available online, but I wasn't really exploring it that much before. But then at that time, during that um, lowest of the low point of my life, mm -hmm. I explored it. And eventually, um, I landed my first ever uh, gig. It, yeah. is, it was actually more on telesales uh, for the first uh, for the first month, and then um, on the sixth month, that's when I started doing SMM. Okay. It's kind of like a long story, but anyways, um, where was I? So wait now. So you got your first gig, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that's okay. So I think I shared this because I I've spoken at Offcon last year. Yeah. And I really um like told everybody what I what 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 approach I I, I did back in the because after four months I already hit my six figure income when I did freelancing and then it went, you know, it became a recurring six figure income ever since then. So I call this the, the strategic approach to making money online because even though I have those core skills, <clears throat> I realized that it wasn't enough because in the digital setting, you have to combine um, what you're passionate about, where you're talented at or where you're really good in uh, and the most profitable niche you could belong to. Okay, in order for you to sustain the kind of, you know, laptop lifestyle that er almost everyone else is dreaming of. Again, that's, so that's passion, talent, and profitability. If you only focus on, like, just passion, okay, well, well you're going to think of it this way. There are lots of entrepreneurs who already 
gave birth and launched their some of their businesses out of passion, but it didn't work out right. Mm -hmm. So also, if it's just all about talent, but you don't know how to use your talent, you could be you could end up being abused by someone who knows how to work on your talent. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then, um, so that's it. Should be it should always be three three factors. So passion, talent, and profitability. Um, that's 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 basically what I've I've discussed in the strategic approach to making money online. So, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, I actually you know got a lot from that story, especially the passion, the talent, and the profitability. Because when you combine those three, you're going to find you know. Um, uh, it's like an overlap on those three where you could be most profitable in in creating your own business, right? Or maybe in freelancing. So thank you for sharing your story, Mel. Yeah. And, and also, um, when I was starting out, I was really just all in for the money. And that's why, you know, the things that I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, the things that I'm mentioning to everyone, it's, yes. it already came from experience. Because if, for example, you're just working working for the money you'll end up feeling tired tired bored and you'll end up feeling like oh i need to quit maybe this is not the, the right thing for me and so on so it, it should be something that you're really good in that you're passionate about and it should be profitable because why why it should always be profitable because if not it's you're gonna have a really hard time looking for people who's gonna need your services yeah why it should be a, a, in a profitable niche all right thank you for sharing your story mel now it's obvious to me that um you obviously a lot have a lot of experience already i mean you've created multiple companies right um uh, you're now freelancing and teaching people how to do social media management right and marketing so yeah. what other experiences are you you know looking to get and what drives you Okay, the main driver of, every, of of all of this was why, I'm, even though I'm pregnant and I'm supposed to be sleeping and still doing things that I want, it's of course freedom and legacy. Yeah. When I say ultimate freedom, I want to live the simplest kind of life. Um, when I say simplest kind of life, for example, you know, you're not having to worry about um, your basic needs next month or things like that. For example, if you thought of, oh, I can go to um, this place, you can easily do that. Just book it. You see what I mean? So it's it's a, that's, that's a simple life for me. Yeah. And not having to worry about getting what you want or going wherever you want or planning to buy whatever you want. And for, for, the, for the legacy, um, I really want to pass it on to my kids, to my children. And I'm also concerned about the, the culture of Filipinos. So that's one thing that I've, you know, I have lots of friends out there who are very talented, but, you know, they're still too blind to see the, the, the opportunities that are out there. I know that in the United States and other parts of the, of the world, um, it's no secret. The internet gives lots of opportunities, but unlike here in the Philippines, it is, so, most of the people don't believe that. So that's why I still advocate um, freelancing or making money online and like revealing what are the other opportunities out there for Filipinos. All right. Now let's go to the, you know, meat and potatoes of the interview because this is really the core of the summit, right? Now let's say, let's say that um, hypothetically speaking, that you suddenly lose everything. So knock on wood. Right, um, you lose your money, you lose your connections, business reputation, followers, etc. The only thing that remains is your core skill, which is, as we know, communication and being adaptable. What three steps are you going to do to regain everything back? <clears throat> okay, so I want to go back to what I said earlier, right? So it's passion, um, profitability, and basically talent. talent. So the communication and adaptability part, I combined that in one of the most profitable niche. What, what am I doing now? I'm in the digital marketing setting, right? 
not gonna tell you my blue ocean, okay? That's a secret. <laughs> but, but but the hot market is is digital marketing. It's a profitable yeah. niche. Okay. Um, I just I it's just a habit that I identified my blue ocean, which I could share with you later. And then, so what I did here for communication adaptability, I looked for the, the most relevant skill sets that are needed by um, clients. Okay, so that would be PR and social media. And then uh, community management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are the three things that I've incorporated with my strengths. And then my market is digital marketing. So... Um, step one, for example, I've totally lost everything. I am going to dominate an, one industry first and really look for the people who's going to need my strengths. Okay. So I want to build a relationship with my prospects and get to know them on a deeper level before pitching myself. Um, for example, um, I've found someone who has a social media following already has a little bit of budget and has skills um, and has the ability to create awesome and valuable content and is also under a profitable industry but uh, sorry and also has charisma but doesn't know how to turn their you know their 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 brands into a digital brand and they don't know how to turn that into a uh, profitable offering online. Yep. So those are the people that I'm going to look for. Okay. I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, uh, I think it's, it, it's, uh, the financial industry in terms of insurance to be specific. It's an untapped market. And I've seen a lot of, a lot of talents, but who doesn't know how to like create online offers and so on. So I think that would be my target. That's also an example. So the second thing is, for example, I already um, talked to them. I built a relationship with them. I told them what I can do. And so I built rapport. And basically, I've already built up my, my name. And I already showed them um, what I can do. So then I would go to step two. Step two would be to present the digital opportunity and my custom action plan with a partnership offer. Okay, so this is, you know, before I continue, the strategy that I'm sharing with you guys right now is um, something that I've already adopted before, and I got it from uh, a very famous multimillionaire guy uh, who did not found it, but popularized the most famous food chain in the world. What is the most famous food chain in the world? McDonald's. McDonald's. Yeah. Yet, right. Yep. So I'm talking about Ray Kroc. Mm. Yeah. So this strategy is something that I adopted from Ray Kroc. Because Ray Kroc didn't really founded McDonald's, but he leveraged his skills and basically made McDonald's famous. Okay. So you guys can like just look it up, look him up, and we can um, uh, check out his story. So guys, you would you would understand. So basically, I'm leveraging my skills here um, <clears throat> for for my prospects. So it's like going to be um, a beneficial relationship for both of us. So I can give them um, a new opportunity, and I also give something in return to me. So the reason why I would I would offer a partnership offer is because I'm starting out, right? So you've mentioned that I've pretty much lost everything. So that means yeah. I even lost my online identity. Yes. So I have to really build everything up from the ground up. So that's why it's a partnership offer because I'm not, I may take some setup fee, but it's not going to be going to be like the ones, uh, like the ones from my previous clients. So it's going to be a partnership, a little bit of fee. Okay, so I'm going to build and lay everything out for my new clients. I will show them how they uh, can combine and maximize their revenue by planning their online and offline <clears throat> marketing. Sorry. The reason why it's online and offline is because in PR, it's not always going to be online. Okay, I, even though I have <clears throat> and I, I manage a digital PR firm, PR is, is not just about online stuff because you can also something to do offline. So it's online, offline. 
And then I'm going to come up with a six month plan for them, very customized, which includes a timeline of launch, okay, a launch of their digital products, um, events or workshops, and then some online activities, like probably Facebook Lives okay. or stuff like that. And then all launches, product offerings will be on set of fee, like I mentioned earlier, set of fee, and then equal to equity or royalty deal. Depends. Like they, I would still give them a choice, of course. So that would be step two. And then step three would be to repeat the same exact thing I did in another industry mm -hmm. until I reach my target monthly income uh, before sharing my success story and launching my own line of products and services, all of which is going to be related to how I did it from the ground up so that I can reestablish my name and credibility. So All right. that would be so you, let's just have a recap. You said your step one would be, you know, to find a niche to dominate and then um, actually dominating it, right? And then step two would be to, you know, once you find people who you could help, you present your the digital opportunity that, you know, um, you, you can do for them and then yeah. um, like cook some partnership agreement with them. Then step three would be to, you know, repeat that same strategy on another industry until you hit your income goal and then create your own line of products and services. Yes. Right? But um, I'm actually curious, Mel, how are you finding these um, blue ocean niches that you can actually dominate? Can you give us like a strategy on how you're doing it? Okay. Okay. So there are four different kinds of markets that you should be targeting, okay? I'm gonna give you two <laughs> right now. If you wanna to get to know more about it, you could, I'm going to uh, share with you the link to my free course, which is yep. the strategic approach to make money online. Um, so it could be wealth and wealth or health. That's the first two, because that's, mm -hmm. that's the most popular, okay? So wealth and health. If you're not under the wealth and health, Kids. I'm not gonna give you the the, the third and fourth cave. <laughs> then you have to think. <laughs> you have to think. <laughs> you have to. You have to carefully think. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you're not under those two, it means that you're not gonna be able to maximize your revenue. The reason why I, I, I those are my top two is because lots of people want to make money. Right. And yep. when, it, when we say making money, it's not just about freelancing. It's also, uh, there's also investments, right? So you have trading, uh, the crypto market, wealth management, insurance, and so on. So that's pretty much a lot, but that's the main, that's like the main category. And then for health, it's a lot of things about health, okay? Because there's mental health, physical health, and then there's uh, under physical health, you have weight loss and so on. So once, so that's the first step. You have to identify the the which market you're going to be in under those four. So wealth, health, and then the other two. Right after that, you're going to identify what is the sub hot market. Okay, so the sub hot market, like what I mentioned earlier, for example, it's wealth. So what's going to be under that? It's in it's financial industry. Let's say that's your sub hot market. So under the sub hot market you're going to find your blue ocean niche, okay? So when you say blue ocean niche, it's something um, that's, that's there and it's so specific, but not everyone is there yet. Not everyone is in that, in that particular um, niche yet, mm -hmm. but it's, it's something that's needed. And you would be able to identify that if you really like, um, if you're going to like do your, how do they call this, your, your, your own research. Because once you find out all of those, I'm, going, I'm giving away the, a PDF under the free course so that they can have um, like access to that. Because once you see the PDF, oh, you, you, it'd be easier for you to identify which, which is your blue ocean market. But I'm gonna give you another example. So, um, this was back in the day. Keto was very, very non-existent before, right? It just, 
uh, became famous last year, I think, or last two years ago. But that was that's one of the the ocean, uh, blue ocean kinds of market example. So the health, and then and then after health, it's physical and weight loss, and then after that, the blue ocean is keto diet. So it's it's like you are reframing and rephrasing what is already out there. That's what I mean. <laughs> okay. Um... So basically, it's knowing the the big market and then finding, uh, you know, a segment of that market or people in that market that isn't well served, right? You don't have to be very general because if you're going to be very general, there will be lots and lots of competitors out there. Okay. Actually, if you're going to check out the services that I provide, mine is community growth, focusing and specializing on because lots of people out there are already using social media marketing, right? Okay, so I am um, providing digital marketing services, but my Blue Ocean niche is community management for retention. So that's another example for you. Okay, thank you for sharing with us your strategy, Mel. Uh, now to the down to the last question, which is the like the Miss Universe question here in the summit, right? What are you? looking to contribute to the world and how are you planning on achieving it okay thank you for the question <laughs> well <laughs> <laughs> okay so i'm not gonna be um dramatic about this but anyway so i was once the kind of woman who lost herself when i became a mother mm -hmm. so i know that you guys are familiar with postpartum depression that really got me and it ate me for quite a while um, but even though that was the case uh, it's a good thing that I've developed a strong mental resilience when I was just a child because of my rough childhood um, that's why I was able to cope up with PDD uh, right after I think two years after I gave birth to my first baby girl so at the time but then at the time I really felt like in order for me to gain my confidence and self-esteem back, I really need to learn something uh, new and something something new. And I would really need to adapt an in-demand skill so that I could regain myself, which actually I did. Um, just so you guys know, it's hard to become a woman, especially if you're a mommy. And if you're a mommy who's, who has the kind of mindset to... Um, doesn't allow being too dependent on our spouse. You know, I have this independence kind of mentality. So if you're that tough, kind of tough woman, I really understand you. It's it's really hard. Um. Anyway, um, during the course of my journey, I've lost a lot of friends, and most of them I lost them when I did network marketing, and then I lost more when we got bankrupt. <laughs> so we were able to identify our real friends. <laughs> so yeah, but but yeah. So actually, this okay. This, that's the main reason why I'm currently building and encouraging women to join my new group called High Value and Financially Independent Women. So I'm the one who's hosting it, and I make sure that every single thing, like content, person, whoever's going to be featured there, uh, really contributes to. The overall growth or coping up of the woman. You said, you said I want what kind of contribution I want, right? So basically, I want to help out all those ladies who are really having a hard time coping up with PDD, and who's who are, you know, who are destined to become someone in whatever industry they're they're in. And if, for example, they 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 know for a fact that they have something that they can offer to the table. I'm 100% I'm backing, backing you up and I can help you get through it. Through the group, it's, it's a very tight-knit group. It's a close group of um, combination of starting out women, starting out entrepreneurs who have established their, their, their businesses. But, you know, like Carla Singson is also there. Celeste Rodriguez, Rizalana of PH. So it's, it's really like 
it's a focused group wherein we just help one another in terms of femininity. So my contribution is to basically help women become queens of their own industries. Thank you for that wonderful answer. <laughs> Here's your crown. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, um, thank you for you know sharing with us your strategy on what you're going to do if ever you lose everything, right? Um, on fighting blue ocean and you know how to dominate that uh, niche. Now, how can we follow you, Mel? Do you have any like free content that we could consume? Yeah. yeah so. It's, this, is, this is actually, this course that I made, that the one I mentioned earlier, the strategic approach to making money online. It's also my way of giving back um, to the community. So I've laid out uh, pretty much the strategy that I, um, that I did. So how I think, um, what did I look at? So it's, everything is there. So for example, you're just starting out for it's unclear to you what you want to do in the online world you can get in, you can get in and jump into that course so it's totally free for everybody all right i uh, will will be you know pasting the link at the bottom of the video so you could get uh, melissa's strategic approach to making money online it's a free online class and uh, so if, if you're ever interested in, you know, learning how to make money online, you should grab that course. Again, Melissa, thank you for spending the time with us and sharing your skills, knowledge, and everything you know, from, from the comedy to the laughs. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.